أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of our fascinating series The Sciences of the Quran I'm your host Yasir Qadhi Now one thing that we're learning as we study the various sciences of the Quran and it is a point that I, I wish to just mention here briefly is the amount of information that we have about the external matters of the Qur'an, which the average Muslim might not even think is important or relevant to know, but in further inspection, we understand how important it is to understand. In other words, the care and detail with which the knowledge of the Qur'an has been preserved, not just the actual verses, not just the actual recitation, but even when it was revealed, how it was revealed, and who it was revealed for. And this shows us if we know so much information about the Qur'an, how then can the Qur'an itself not have been preserved? In other words, if the external information from the Qur'an and to the Qur'an has been preserved, then do you not think that the Qur'an itself has also been preserved? And of course the response to that is indeed it has. In today's episode, we will mention one of the most important sciences that is needed in understanding the Qur'an. It is a bit of an advanced science, so we have to make a short summary of it. And it is a science that is essential and required to get a proper understanding of the Qur'an, but it requires much explanation and we don't have time for that. But what we cannot explain in total, we don't leave in total either. We're supposed to summarize and explain. And the topic of today is a topic that we call in Arabic, Asbab nuzul or the causes of revelation. The causes of revelation or the cause of revelation is defined to be the specific event or occurrence that was the direct cause of the revelation of a particular verse or surah of the Quran. In other words, something happens here on earth and because of it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Quran. So the sabab al nuzul is an immediate cause that precedes the revelation of the verse by a very short time frame. It must be pointed out that most of the Qur'an does not have a specific sabab al nuzul So we don't know exactly why Surah Al-Fatiha was revealed or maybe there was no specific reason for it to have been revealed. It was just revealed for the guidance of mankind. And that's perfectly fine. But a number of times, many frequently, hundreds of times, an incident occurred and to cater to that incident, to solve the problem that had arisen, to answer the questions that are raised, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Qur'an. And so this is what we call sabab al nuzul This classification, this understanding immediately tells us that sabab al nuzul cannot be thought of. It cannot be guessed. There is no educated guess when it comes to Sabab al Nuzul. The only recourse of information that we have regarding Sabab al Nuzul is that the companions themselves tell us. If not the Prophet, then the companions themselves explicitly state this happened and then Allah revealed such and such a verse to cater to it. Therefore, we have to understand that it is not in the realm of Ijtihad. Unlike our previous lesson, which was about Makki and Madani, Makki and Madani, we can get, as we said, from two sources, either the companions themselves, or we can try to make an educated guess. But when it comes to Asbab and Nuzul, there is no such thing as an educated guess. All that we have to do is rely upon the statements of the companions. It is also possible that a number of verses were revealed to cater to the same situation. In other words, we have multiple asbab al nuzul We have multiple reasons for the verse to have been revealed. Now sometimes when you look at these multiple reasons, we find that one of them is not authentic and the other is authentic. So we just neglect the one that is not authentic. But sometimes we find a number of incidents that occurred, all of which claim to be the sabab al nuzul of a particular verse. Let me give you one example. One example is that it is narrated that a certain companion by the name of Hilal ibn Umayyah accused his own wife of committing adultery. And the ruling had been up until that time 
that if you accuse another woman of committing adultery, you had better bring four witnesses. If you don't bring four witnesses, then you are going to be punished for slandering a woman. But Hilal one day came home and he saw, we seek Allah's refuge, he saw this evil act and he could not help but say that, Oh Ya Rasulullah, she is my wife, I cannot now go to her. Now that I have seen her betray me, I have seen her with another man, what do you expect me to do? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran that those of you who accuse their wives of adultery, they have this option. So Allah revealed it responding to Hilal ibn Umayyah's dilemma. And the dilemma was, as we said, that he could not remain married to a woman that he knew was not faithful to him, that he knew was disloyal to him. He knows it, he has seen it. And he says, O Messenger of Allah, a man sees his own wife committing an evil act, the act of fornication. Should he go and find four witnesses? This is my wife now. How can I go and find four witnesses? And so the Prophet ﷺ could not do anything because there is no revelation revealed until Allah revealed a verse in the Quran, which is verse number 6 of Surah An-Nur, verse number 6 of, of Surah 24. And Allah says, whenever a man accuses his wife of fornication, then he has to swear four times that, that he is telling the truth. And the fifth time, that the curse of Allah is upon him if he is lying. And the woman can get out of the punishment if she swears four times that he is the one lying and that the anger of Allah is upon her if she is the one that is lying. So both of them have the option of doing this. We call it in Arabic mutual cursing or li'an. There is a cause of revelation and the cause of revelation is Hilal ibn Umayyah's situation. However, we also find that in Sahih Bukhari we learn that Another companion, Uwaym al-Ajlani, also accused his wife. And he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said the same thing to him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, Uwaym, Allah has revealed verses regarding you. And he recited this verse to him. So this shows us that these two incidents occurred in a similar time frame. And so one verse came down catering to both of the situation. It is also possible, and this is an interesting phenomenon, that the verse has come down more than once. The verse has come down for different asbab al nuzul that occurred at different timings. So for example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah verse 113, It is not possible for the Prophet and the believers that they seek forgiveness for uh, those who are pagans. Now it is reported that this verse came down for a number of different reasons. One reason is reported that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to seek forgiveness for his own mother. And so Allah revealed this verse. Another incident tells us that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to seek forgiveness for his uncle Abu Talib. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse. And these two instances are in different time frames. So we can say that it is possible that the same verse came down more than once at different timings. Because the same verse would give the message to the Prophet ﷺ to remind him that the answer to his question is already present in the Qur'an. It is also possible that the opposite occurs. That one sabab al nuzul is the cause of revelation of many different verses. So one incident occurs and to respond to it, number of different verses come down. And one example is a very beautiful one. And it is one that our sisters will all, always love to hear. And it is one in which Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, I see that Allah always mentions men in the Qur'an and He never mentions women. So in response to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a number of verses over a period of time. The first of them is Surah An-Nisa, verse 32. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا اكْتَسَبُوا وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا اكْتَسَبٍ That men have a reward for what they have done and earned, and women will have a reward for what they have done and earned. Also Allah revealed verse number 35 of Surah Al-Ahzab. And this verse number 35 is one of the most comprehensive verses with regards to gender uh, equity in Islam, the spirituality of men and women is the same. Allah says, believing men and women, pious men and women, righteous men and women, charity giving men and women, fasting men and women, patient men and women, all the way to the end of the verse, all of these men and women, Allah says, Allah has prepared a great reward for them. 
And lastly, Allah revealed verse number 195 of Surah Ali Imran, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inni la udi'u amala amilin minkum min dhakarin aw untha ba'dukum min ba'd. Never will I allow the work of any of you to go unrewarded. Whether they are male or female, you are together members of one another. Ba'dukum min ba'd. So the question of Umm Salama was the cause of revelation of all of these verses. Another phenomenon of this chapter of Asbab al-Nuzul is that we can also compile the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and how each of them was the cause of verses being revealed. And the most famous example is that of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab would always be proud that three verses were revealed about me and he would mention these verses, this particular incident and that particular incident and he would always be proud. Likewise, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, he said, Four verses came down in the Qur'an because of things that I did. So obviously the companions were very proud about the fact that uh, certain verses of the Qur'an came down and they have every right to be proud. And this is one chapter also of uh, Asbab and nuzul The question arises, if the sabab and nuzul of a verse is known, then should the verse be restricted only to that person or is it relevant to all of mankind? In other words, is the ruling restricted to the specific circumstances of revelation or can it be applied to the generality of the wording of the verse? And the response to this is that there is unanimous consensus amongst the scholars of Islam that the ruling of a verse is dependent upon the generality of its wording and not the specificity of its reason for revelation. Let me repeat that because this is a fundamental principle of understanding the Qur'an. The ruling of a verse is dependent upon the generality of its wording and not the specificity of its reason for revelation. And I'll just give you one example. In Surah number 59 verse 7, Allah says, whatever the Prophet ﷺ gives you, take it, and whatever he takes or forbids you, abstain from it. This verse was revealed with regards to war booty. When the Prophet ﷺ is dividing uh, the, the treasures of the war that are captured, he gives some and he prohibits others. And so Allah is revealing the verse with regards to the booty of war. But the verse doesn't say that. The verse says, whatever the Prophet gives you, take. Whatever he withholds from you, don't take. So the scholars of Islam have unanimously understood this verse to be at its face value. Not just for the war booty. Anything he tells you to do, do it. Anything he tells you to abstain, abstain from it. And this is a manifestation of the rule that the ruling is taken from the generality of the wording and not the specificity of its cause of revelation. This brings us to the conclusion of the concept of Asbab and nuzul We will continue talking about the sciences of the Qur'an in our future episodes. I hope to see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله